not too bad, isn't it? Not too bad. Um, you know, big weekend this weekend uh, for for the well for for all four finals. Um, I think Saturday. You know, I want to start off on a negative note. I, I, I suppose just before, before it goes out of my head, I do feel the GA missed a small trick here. Um, Division one and Division four on Saturday would have been perfect, and Division yeah. two and three. And my, my thinking behind that is Dublin are going to bring a crowd no matter who they play. So you have Division 2. It's very obscure to have Dublin in Division 2. And yeah. so that was perfect. Division 3, Sligo and Fermanagh, or sorry, Fermanagh and uh, Cavan. You know, Cavan will bring great support and so will Fermanagh. Like, but not a massive, like, a, you know, there wouldn't be 20 or 30,000 from both counties going. So it would have been a perfect scenario. And then it would have given the Division 4 final great exposure. Um I was involved in the Division 4 final back in 2018, I think it was, with Carlo and Leash. And it, it just felt a bit soulless. It just felt yeah. a bit soulless. You're, you're, you're looking, you know, you're obviously standing on the Hogan stand side, looking across at a completely empty, you know, Cusick. And, uh, and you know yourself, it's still special for the players and yeah. the fans are back in this thing. But it just, it just, it, it was very soulless. And for man, I played Armagh after it. And, there was, you know, there was a bit of a crowd in for the second game, like, but wasn't really... It didn't really do it for me, you know, but if that had been on before, for example, Mayo and Galway, you know, the second half of the game would have been huge. There would have been a big crowd and for the exposure that those lads would have got as well, you know, and stuff. I just think it would have added to the atmosphere for them, you know. So, is, is, is it a case, Stephen, that the, the Lee finals are going to be uh, going to be out of fashion in a few years' time? Do you think they'll still go with it? Because as you said there, that the crowd's like, what will they get Saturday night? For the Division Three and Four Four finals here, like even even Sunday. Sorry, what will they get on Sunday? They'll get probably thirty to forty thousand on Sunday. Will they get thirty thousand on Saturday? Just about. Yeah, yeah, pro- probably if if even that, and if even that on Saturday, you know, um, you know, I I, I, do, I think if you win the league, you win the league. You know, I think the the league finals. I think with the new format of the of the 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 the, the, the Super Sixteens, if you want to sort of call it that, and the provincials and stuff. I think the league final is getting in the way for a lot of teams, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. It is. This it, like there's Kerry away on a holiday, or whatever, you know, a training camp, whatever, and they have four weeks now sitting, you know, cooking nicely for four weeks. Whereas there's, I texted you earlier about, about Mayo, like will Mayo play a full team on Sunday? I know you think they will, but you're risking, like imagine Ryan O'Donoghue, he's got a bit touch wood, I don't want to wish it to anybody. Imagine he get injured, imagine he pull his hamstring on Sunday, like that's Mayo's championship in jeopardy, like. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know but, it's, but the, the you flip. Know? I, to be honest, Stephen, I think I think they can handle a few injuries. I think we we'll say the likes of no, I I don't know about Killian O'Connor's uh, story, but we we'll say if we we'll say if Ryan was who did go down, Tommy Connery is there. Like we have, there is good strength and depth this year with Mayo that I think they can manage. Like it is still a national title. It is, and look at we've said this before. It's not the end of the world if you know if they don't win the provincial. Yeah, yeah. Well, what? I was looking oh, at the picture. I'm I'm gonna throw something at you. So yeah. if you don't win Connacht, if you don't win Connacht, I was looking at this earlier. If you don't win Connacht, right, or don't get to the final of Connacht, yeah. you could end up as third seeds in a group with Dublin or Kerry or possibly the Ulster champions. So you imagine if mm. just just for talk's sake, say Mayo beat West Common, but then they lose to Galway, you could Mayo could find themselves in a group with Kerry, Jerry, and a another, and all of a yeah. sudden. All of a sudden, it looks a different fucking scenario. And then the other, the other flip side of it is, if you're seed one in the group, I think you get an extra break for your quarter final as well. You know, so you get yeah. an extra week rest, which obviously at this level is is pretty critical. You know, um, so there is benefits of the provincial still. Okay, there is benefits yeah. still, but I do feel the provincials could they could die a slow death. But I, I think it makes Connacht so interesting this year because Galway, Kerry, or sorry, Galway, Mayo, and Roscommon are all on the one side. Yeah. Nobody yeah. ended. Is going to find themselves in a group of death, you know. So, yeah. well, two, two of them, two of them, like two of them could right. even, like, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. So, you know, it, it's it's going to be it's going to be interesting, like, it's going to be interesting. But I'll tell you what, right, and I'll tell you this now. Um, you, you talked about a bench, I was actually doing a bit of research before we came on tonight, and I was looking at the bench, you know, last week Galway brought on, you know, Comer and Rob Finnerty, you know, yeah. two, two, fo- two forwards, and as you know. Would probably start in most county teams, you know. Well, would start in most county teams, you know, and they're bringing them off the bench, and I think that's a fucking huge sign. I think Galway have found a few nuggets this year. Obviously, getting Peter Cook back was a big was a big plus. I know 
back in January there was talk of him not committing when Mike Cullen were still going on their on their club run. Um, you know, the Chelly's playing some serious stuff. Obviously, Paul Conroy for me is a brilliant footballer, really, really good leader. He's always worth three or four fights a game. But 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 Maher in the middle of the field yeah. has pushed nearly to wing forward now. Yeah. And it just gives him a different it gives him a wee different dynamic, you know. The only thing and I'm gonna say about Galway, and I called it last year, I still don't think they're sure about their goalkeeper. You know, they're caught between Parr and Gleason, and Gleason made a couple of errors against Galway. Yeah. Or sorry, against Armagh. Now he made that one mistake, but late in the game he pulled off a fantastic save. You know, now personally from studying them over the last couple of years, just even during the time was common, I do feel that Gleason is probably better with restarts, slightly better restarts than Parr, but I maybe feel Parr is a better goalkeeper, like a shot stopper. So it's it's nearly weighing up what's more important to you, you know, is it is it is it you know and for me, it, it has I, to be happy with the man who's the kickouts, you know? Yeah, I'd say, like, Gleason definitely has the length and power. Power definitely probably has that medium kick out in terms of the, <laughs> yeah. into, the into the yeah. pockets of five and seven. He, he's probably a better better kicker in that regard. But um, look at, I suppose, Gleason has, has made some... <laughs> he's, I, I, I'm very conscious of, of... I don't like slating many players on this. I'm very conscious no, of that. No, but, not, no, really I, I just think I just think they're not sure who to go for as number yeah. one. You know, I think, yeah. I mean, you've got that face in this. Yeah. It can cause a wee bit of a, a wee, probably a wee bit of lack of confidence now. Now, the other thing about it as well, Mayo, on the flip side, I'm looking at the Donegal game here, for example. Tommy Conroy... Yeah. Yeah, McLaughlin, Patrick O'Hara, great experience, great quality. You know, you're looking at Derry's bench as well. McKinless, Lachlan, Murray, Shea Downey. I'm going to throw something at you. Out of all the four finalists on Sunday, I was looking at Dublin's bench and I was looking at Scully, Colin Basquiel, Larry, yeah. and I'm sort of thinking to myself, it wouldn't frighten you. It yeah. wouldn't frighten you. You know, those boys coming on, don't get me wrong, Scully's a class footballer. Like, you know, I'm not suggesting that these boys are, are, are any way in, in any capacity bad footballers. They're brilliant footballers. But they just don't have that same stardust that maybe, you know, a, a Brogan, you imagine a Brogan coming off the bench, you know, eight years ago and a, and a tired defender looking going, fuck me, here we go. Like, you know, or Manaman or whatever. I just don't think they've got the same dynamic impact that a Tommy Conroy would have or a Gareth McKinless or Lachlan Murray. Like Lachlan Murray's a fine foot, one of the most promising young footballers in Ulster at the minute, you know. And, and I think out of all the four teams on Sunday, and obviously we'll talk about Saturday, uh, but we're talking about Sunday here. Out of all the four finalists on Sunday, I feel Dublin probably have 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 the less threat coming off the bench. That, that, that's that's actually <laughs> frightening. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's controversial, Stevie. That is controversial. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the current I'm, present moment in time. At the current present moment in time, I'm looking at it here now. And I'm like, like I, I'm looking at Dublin's defence, like of, of, of Newcomb and Larkin O'Dell in the forward line, Tom Lehiff and Lee Gannon. Them lads are they're brilliant footballers. But they just don't have the same probably level of experience or quality that that, pre, that their predecessors had, the Johnny Coopers, the Philip McMahons, you know. And that's I would say the fear factor and is starting to slide a wee bit from Dublin. You know, the fear factor. Derry will go on Sunday full of confidence. Derry will not go fear. Derry will go one hundred percent convinced they'll beat Dublin on Sunday. You know, so. Yeah. They're, they're two very interesting games. They're two very, oh, well, very interesting. Well, games. just just to get back here to we we'll say we we we'll, we we'll talk about Jerry and Dublin in a second. But you're all about Mayo at the at the beginning there. What would you do as next day? What would you what would you go for there? That with Roscommon around the corner. <laughs> There's three things that you can win. You can win the national league. You can win the Connacht championship, and you can win the All Ireland. Okay. I'm looking at the All Ireland now, and I'm sort of thinking the five teams who I would probably think can win it. Right for me at the minute, at the present moment in time, the five teams that can win it are Kerry, Mayo, Galway, Dublin, and possibly Derry. Everything fell right for them. Right, that's the five who I think are leading contenders for Sam Maguire. Okay, um, people talk about Tyrone and the you had a resurgence. I just don't think they are. Right, I just don't think they're contenders right now. Okay, but I think those five are to win Connacht. They're going to have to beat Roscommon and they're going to have to beat Galway. Okay, to win a Connacht title. Okay, there's a strong chance to do that, but to win the Sam is going to be a lot more harder. And I'm just thinking now's your chance to get a national title, bit of confidence, bit of morale, and it's and, and you know yourself, and it it's hard to beat winning national yeah. title. Bit of a meal that evening, two beers, do them no harm, bit of together, you know, bit of time together, as you know, within a group that's important. And here, listen, it just gives you momentum. It gives you momentum. I seen Davy Burke. 
was was sort of Davy, your old mate, was was playing a bit of a card in the in the interview last week. He sort of said, look, you know, Mayo took their week off this week, so you know it gives them a bit of a bit of a break, and the, we'll go up and watch them at full tilt next week. So he's he's more or less assuming that they'll go full tilt. But look, you may see two or three changes for both teams. But I would say deep down, McStay and a uh, uh, Podrick Joyce will want a national title. One hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yeah. So am I right in saying that uh are Mayo on now three weeks in a row in terms of obviously this Sunday, Roscommon and then possibly yeah. Galway if they got through it? That's right, yeah. Okay, well th- yeah, that's 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 a tough schedule now. Now look at oh. obviously they've they've obviously uh, they, they've had their week off. They obviously gets modern to put out put out a second <laughs> team. Um look at I, I agree with you, CD, like it's very hard you're being a rock and a hard place here in terms of trying to juggle everything. Like realistically, like you know, uh, you're gonna you're gonna start twelve, thirteen of the starters um, this Sunday that you will on on Sunday week here. So um, I thought I was a bit disappointed from the GA in terms of you know having it on the the request was was turned down for the Saturday. I just thought it was just real, um, you know, poor form in terms of the could have, huh? Yeah. That's why I was saying to you, Division 1 and 4 would have been perfect. You know, the PR both finals and get a big crowd in through the gate. And 2 and 3 would have been perfect as well. 100% like. So, it's... Um, no, I, I, I... My gut is, I think I think the two of them, go MAO, will, will go f- fully at it. And like, as as I think someone said, the Paul Connery said in an in interview late, lately that, you know, obviously there's no one in the Galway dress room that has, has a National League title. So they're obviously, you look, it's still a National League title here. So it's it's nothing to be sniffed at. So I nearly, I nearly go as far as to say that Mayo would, would at this stage, would um, w- would prefer a National League title instead of a Connor title. Um, if that um, might be controversial here, but obviously what you said about the kind of title there I, with the seed now that's going to be very important as the, as the summer summer progresses here. Like, but I, I to be honest, I think McSay will go. The two of them will go to the full the full deck, and they're going to roll the dice here. If they pick up a couple of injuries, they've built a squad throughout the uh, league campaign where they can sustain them, and it's next man up mentality here. Because if you go the other way, Steve, I think I think you're just sending the wrong messages into your into your squad, into your team going out on Sunday. If you're resting five or six players with so-called five or six, you know your t- your A team will say, "No, what does that say, say to the the rest of the your your team?" There, like we're not we're not we're not too bothered here if we win this or not. Like that's it's a dangerous that's a dangerous kind of scenario to put yourself into. That's my opinion now. Plus as well, plus as well, I was up at it last year. Actually, I was up at the game. They got destroyed last year in the in the national league final. You know, mm. they got sorry, stuff. yeah, and that's that's a huge point there. Sorry, I, I meant to say that. Black, you know, yeah, exactly. So it's obviously what Kerry did last year, hundred percent. I, I just, I can't. I just think, uh, I really think the GA have, have let have let the fucking teams down here in, in terms of the schedule here. In terms of you know, your reward yeah. in getting to the National League final is you're out in championship bloody seven days after. I just, I just, you know, and, and to have your request turned down then for the Saturday, 24 hours, like, I just don't think that was much to ask. I just think it's, yeah. it's poor form on their, on their part. Um, and, I yeah, I, I, go on. On, the flip side of that, on the flip side of that, like, you're sort of thinking to yourself, like, players probably want to be playing games. You know, you want to play yeah. every week. <laughs> I, I don't think, I don't think one game per week is much of a fatigue issue and you know, now I know we, we we look at professional sport, and you look at the Premier League and stuff like that. I know they're professional athletes. I respect that, right? I respect that. But a lot of these lads are training and preparing like professional athletes. You know, and I was chatting to gentleman on the other night, like, and we're talking about a, a, this man's a, a runner, like, and he was saying to me, you know, he's training the training he was doing, and he says, you know, so Sunday's his big day, half marathon on a Sunday, recovery run on a Monday, you know, eight mile tempo on a Tuesday, recovery run on a Wednesday. <laughs> You know, 400 meter intervals on a Thursday, rest day Friday, slow run Saturday, and then back out with that, you know. And you're sort of yeah. thinking, like, it's, it is like, you know, sometimes we get maybe too wrapped up in the whole sort of like, oh, it's not enough time to repair. The only thing that I notice from a week to week basis is the only people who seem to be under major pressure on a week to week basis is the analysis. You know, yeah. when you're Sit down. They're analysing Galway right now. Okay, so right now, as we're as me and you are speaking, they're looking at Powers kickouts. They're looking at Gleason's kickouts. They're looking for weaknesses in in Galway's defence. Is there is there somewhere where we can expose that? Right. 
But then Sunday evening, they probably don't even have time to celebrate as a management team. Straight away, McStay and Rochford and these guys are thinking, right, where's Roscommon? What are we looking at? You know, and I know that, 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 that is, that's a very demanding, it's a demanding yeah. schedule. Something like that on a weekly basis, you know, and it, and it takes, people have no idea the analysis that goes into it and the, and the research that goes into it and stuff too. And I know some groups like to, like the player lead the analysis, you know, where yeah. people go into it. But I, I, I just feel you know, as a management team, you have a responsibility yourself to go in and delve in and watch those games. Like I remember sitting and for watching, and even at club level last year, and they're like, for example, like the, the draws in the down club, club championship last year, give an example. This is only club management, you know, and maybe people might like get an insight in this. Like, but the draw was on a Monday night in, in, in down every Monday night. So on a Monday night, we knew who we were going to get the following week. I was straight on the down TV that night, pulling off that game and, you know, having a look at what, who we're playing and maybe come back over another couple of their games. That's only club level. You can imagine yeah. the detail at the county level, you know, and stuff like that. So, you know, the analysis, the analysis is, 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 a, is, is a very, very demanding aspect of it. And, you know, preparing. And I think that's where teams are sort of more panicky about the preparation because as regards, like, player, like, a player recover from a match inside 48 to 72 hours, you know, and they'll be well fit then to go the following week again. And momentum's, momentum's a, a lovely thing. If you're winning every week and you've got that momentum, it's it's hard to stop. It's hard to stop, you know. Just, well, I, I do agree with you in, in terms of players want to be played every week, but I suppose there is a balance to it in terms of maybe, I don't know if you're on three, three weeks, three weeks on and then a week off, just to, as you said, readjust there. Because from the analysis point of view, obviously they're not, they're not professionals. You know, even with the train load, you're, you know, you're training the evening time, you're getting home late, your, your sleep is affected because your adrenaline is still going from training and then you're up the next morning for work like. So the recovery is huge here. And that, that's, that's one thing, obviously, you know, on about, like, even look at Johnny Sexton uh, uh, for Leinster, like, you know, the main difference is for impression is they train at 9 o'clock in the morning, 9 to 1 o'clock, and then they, yeah. they can go to bed at a, at a sensible hour, like Tom Brady used to do at half 8 in the bloody evening, like. So, like... I think it affects the Connacht teams, the West of Ireland, a bit more because yes. a lot of the players are based on capital, you know. So, you know, well, like yourself, obviously, yeah. you would know you know, having to travel across. I know even just like there was common lads at the time, like, you know, there was only sessions were only on a Friday, Sunday. Well, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, but because only asking lads then to come across, you know, the one night. And then there was opportunities then throughout the year where they would do maybe a collective session in Dublin. And it's very difficult yeah. when you've got a senior panel in Dublin and you're asking them to travel two hours on a Wednesday night and two hours back and then, you know, as you say, up to work and then another two hours on a Friday and that takes its toll on the body too, like, you know. It does, of so, course, like, so if, if yeah. I was putting a gun to your head here now, who, who are you going to call me all going on, on Sunday? I've, I've, I've called it out as text we made earlier on there. He's, he's, we're having a discussion. I just said, am I going to go Galway? I'm going to go Galway. I, I, I've been very impressed with Galway and I'll tell you what I've been very impressed with. I've been very impressed with their stubbornness and their and their and their sort of what I would call like you know nearly the the, the dirty side of the game. They seem to be getting a lot better at that, you know. <coughs> um, now at the same time, Mayo showed quite a bit of resilience this year as well. Like, but I, I just feel I know they made a lot of changes at the weekend. Uh, she, uh, and uh, sorry, you know, against Monaghan, and you know, I just I just feel I just feel Galway are just starting to get their players right. They're starting to get their players back. You know, the likes of Walsh, Homer. Saturday, they're starting to get those men back in the field, right? And I just feel there maybe be a wee bit more of a freshness about Galway this weekend. And, and I feel the fact as well last year, they're probably looking last year and they're thinking to themselves, fuck, we were close, but we were very, very close to the Holy Grail. And I would say that they're thinking to themselves this year, like, you know, we, we've unfinished business. Now, Malloy's a loss, Silk's a loss. There is, there, is, there is men there that they'll miss this year. But I just feel that the men that brought in and what they have coming off the bench as well, their finishers. I I, I, I like the look of Galway this year. And yeah, I know a bit. I, yeah. I, I, said, yeah. I said I I think I said it a couple of weeks ago. Like Galway, no one was, was talking about Galway and yeah. they're they're going going about their business very very efficiently and quietly. Like they're to me, like yeah. they've they've unearthed, as you said, there are a few players in the league that they needed last year. In the final, what what was separating themselves and Kerry is their bench. Like after after sixty eight minutes, sorry, what they kept the clean sheet at the weekend against Kerry. Yes. Right, they kept the clean sheet. The week before, if you take out the high ball into the square from Ethan Rafferty, they yeah. never, you know, they they, they kept our at six points. You know, and I'll I'll tell you this now. See defensively, I think John Devilly, I had John up at the school in January, um, doing a coach education evening end up. So so impressed with John by you know I think he's a, I think John is one of the most underrated coaches 
Keanu Neal got a lot of credit last year, but to be fair, I, I don't know if it was Warren. I think John Devilly now, for me, is the top man in that setup. But he's a really shrewd operator, a real, real, real good coach. One of the best coaches I've come across now, you know, on, on the inter-county circuit, in my opinion, like, he's top class. And you can see even the stuff he was doing that evening, like, was was was, was really, really impressive. Like, so you can see that. And look, they've got a, the one thing, and I was looking at this earlier, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you this as a Mayo man, right? I'm looking at the four teams. I'm looking at the top teams. So the five I've named, right? The five I've named, Kerry, Mayo, Galway, Derry, and, and Dublin. They're my five contenders, right? Every one of them have a really superstar forward. Walsh, Clifford, right? Uh, McGuigan, okay. King Kong, right? Who's Mayo superstar? Answer that. Ooh. Ooh. Why did he call a superstar forward? Like? Uh, no, I, I, I wouldn't... <laughs> I think yeah. he's a class act. Is he at that level at the minute? Yeah, no, and like, I, I, yeah, I don't doubt that, Stephen. Like, as in, like, I, I think, yeah, do we have that, that kind of, like, Rod is still quite young in terms. No, I don't mean. I'm, I'm not trying to dodge the question here. I don't think Rod is a generational player in terms of. I think the players you've you've named out there are are a step above above that. But I do think Mayo's um, squad in terms of the forwards. Uh, yeah. are much better than the rest of the teams you've named out there in terms of the six forwards and the two or three to come off the bench here. I think, to be honest, Mayo as a collective are way ahead, like especially Derry, like Dublin, uh, like Kerry, like I said this before, like Kerry's, Clifford, Clifford's are Kerry's biggest uh, strength and their biggest weakness here. Like, yeah. so it's, there's so much focus. Like, sometimes you don't need, like you're you're talking like the top top players here, like Rod, yes, Rod or like Tommy Conroy or or Edo, they're probably a, a step step down from that. But like, I still think you know that that difference isn't isn't colossal here. And the 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 other four or five forwards, consider and even with Mayo's half back line, like Mayo are scoring at a at a high clip here this year, and they're the biggest. I, I think the biggest weakness in the past are our Achilles heels. In the in the past was was conceding goals here. I think I think you know structurally yeah. we're we're definitely we're definitely better here. Like so, that's I don't know. I'm dodging the question there, but go on. No, no. My, my, my point is just this: last year, it was that wee bit of stardust that won the All Ireland for Kerry. Yeah, Clifford was successful in the final. Yeah, now, yeah. now Walsh probably give one of the best displays of point kicking. You know, on on the losing side, you know, he he, yeah. he walked away from the All Ireland final. It was it ten points he got? You know, and you're sort of thinking, Canavan, Canavan, Canavan in ninety five. Go on. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and and go back to Canavan, right? So just take Canavan for example. If you look at all the All Ireland winners, like they've always had that real, that different, that that sort of what you would call difference maker, you know, that man who can just do something out of the ordinary. And I think Ryan O'Donoghue can do that because he's such a skillful footballer. He, he's got such guile and, and finesse and, and quality. And I just feel, but I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking, Andy, you know, that superstar forward that can pull a mark out of nowhere, can create something out of nothing, or, as you say, throw two or three defenders towards him and free up someone else. You know, I, I just feel that that could be the difference this year in, in winning Sam and not winning Sam. Just having that real out-and-out -out marquee man that can make things happen just out of nothing. You know, like even like soccer terms, for example, you know, like your, your Earl and Haaland or whatever, you know, that can just... Maybe do nothing for sixty minutes and then pop up and score two unbelievable goals out of nowhere. You know, just that superstar. And, and I think, yeah. you know, I don't. No, I go on. Yeah, I don't. I don't dispute that. I don't. <laughs> and look, it's, you you could be right here in terms. Of, I think. I think you're right in terms of the five teams that named out there. It, be, it will be one of those those teams here. But in terms of. Yeah, look, we're going, you know, they play a very similar uh, style of football here. They're, they're two, as you said there, Matthew Tierney and, and I think it's Kelly, the two wing forwards. They're kind of like um, uh, wing forwards slash midfielders here and they get back into the defensive structure. Like, And then with Mayo, they have obviously Jordan Flynn and they have Fiona McDonough. They're, they're wing forwards slash midfielders as well. Like, So it's the, the two of them kind of set up very, very, uh, very similar. So it'll be interesting... Um, it'd be interesting now. I look at I. I can't wait for Sunday's Browns. I, I think it's going to be two two cracking games. I think. I think um, you're going for Galway. I think. Look, I think Noah's bench could actually. If Tommy Conroy and if Killian is are, are good to go here. I think. I think them two could be the difference maker uh, makers come come Sunday. To be honest with you. Um, but look, I would I be looking. I obviously wouldn't be surprised if Galway nicked it by by two, a couple of points here. You know, it's it's um, you know it's 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 a it's a toss of the coin here, let's be honest. Who's going to pick up Shane Walsh? 
Who's going to pick up Shane Walsh? Paddy Durkin, I'd say. Okay, okay. And, and the, up him. Listen, you know, Matty Ryan, David O'Connor will be interesting against uh, Conroy and Maher. I think if you shut down Conway, and, if you shut down Conroy and Walsh, you know, you're going a long way to, to nullifying Galway, you know. And, and well, I, do, I do think... You, Go on. I think Matty, I think Matty Ryan will be sent on to Conroy to do a real number on him, you know. Yeah, well he'll he'll run him to the ground. The, the biggest look at it, Paul Conroy here is 34, 35 years of age, like so the, the biggest the biggest issue here for Gawi is they haven't yes, they found Maher, but like you know, are you pinning your hopes onto him? Like they need they need who's gonna come in after 55, 60 minutes when, when Conroy is gassing here? Because I can tell you one thing, Matty Ryan is one of the fittest players, and Jim O'Connor is certainly one of the fittest player, players in Ireland. So whoever he's on, he's going to be absolutely running, running the length of that that pitch uh, on on Sunday evening. Like so, um, that that's the other thing. Like um, I, that, that, to me, Galway, the only frailty I think I can see in Galway's game is the backup for midfield. I think they need, you know, they can't be like. like don't get me wrong here. Paul Connery is a fantastic footballer. He could score three or four points here on Sunday. But come the last fifteen minutes. The game's now are 75, even 80 minutes long at this stage between uh, stoppage time. So they do, you know, who, who are their kind of different makers, um, impact subs? Are, like, going to come. They'll, be, they'll be moving pieces around that are on the board. You know, you're probably yeah. looking at Peter Cook to go to the middle of the field. Matthew Tierney can go to the middle of the field. Um, you know, one of the Kellys has played there as well in the past. Like, But yeah, no, listen, no, I agree with you. You know, Crow Park as well. Big, big factor as well when it comes to the age profile and the, and the condition levels, you know. So, as you say, I think, I, I can't remember who described it, but someone described it, maybe Marty Clark or something said to me one day that, that, that Mayo, he felt Mayo were, were, the, were the most powerful lower body team in the country, you know, from a running perspective. Like, you know, they've, they've so much running power, you know, yeah. and if you talk about Paddy Durkin, like Paddy Durkin could easily put Walsh in the back foot because Walsh, you know, well, Chelsea obviously wants to go that way, but he doesn't want to go that way, you know. Yes. So does Paddy Dirk come out on Sunday and decide I'm gone, you know, and you well, know, the, play that? The biggest, foot, foot, you know? the biggest thing, Steve, I'm looking for Sunday is how <clears throat> structurally sound Mayo are in terms of are they giving yeah. up? You know, it's Croker. Are they giving up goal chances? How yeah. like, uh, like I'm gonna I'm gonna obviously go to go to the game here. Like I want to see their defensive structure when they obviously yeah. the kick outs. Wh- what structure they have for that? It'd be just very. It'd be fascinating. Uh, you know, I think but, I think during the league they've they've set up in terms of they're not conceding as many goal chances. And look, sorry, you want, I'm cutting across you there. What are you saying there? I was going to back up what you said there. Also, something that you mentioned a couple of weeks ago. Galway will actually ask questions of Mayo's attack because yeah. Galway will be. So- organized you know they'll be really yeah. defensive sound. they'll play with a plus one or a plus two yeah. and, and you'll have to find as you call that structured attack you know that you know that that sort of set play you know have mayo got that in them where they can slow the game down you know yeah. they can create something you know and, and there's going to be moments of the game where, where there is you know control from galway and game management from galway you know so that'll be interesting that'll be interesting and, you look know. at it and, and it'll become that look at it this is always the all Ireland. Titles or finals always comes down, or semi finals always come down yeah. to the last five minutes, six minutes of the game here. Who is who has it in their locker as a collective? What we're doing here as a collective, what do we want to do here? Because you know, when you really need a score, um, look at I, I that again, uh, between conceding goals and, and Mayo, uh, I don't think we've had that in our locker in terms of you know the yeah. final five ten minutes we needed a score and we couldn't get it and we didn't yeah. know exactly what we wanted to do as a collective so look at we'll, we'll see on Sunday 